Hello and welcome again everyone. Today I just wanted to add some more clarity to our investigation on using mesocosms in biology where we want to specify our research question as one that looks like this. What is the effect of pH? And specifically we want to look at a range somewhere between 2.5 and 4.0. So this pH range on germination and post-germination growth in mung beans, Vigna radiata. And we are going to use these five little containers, which in biology we refer to them as mesocosms. Small bits of the natural environment brought into the lab, kept in a closed system like this, under controlled conditions. Of course, the controlled conditions that we speak about here in this experiment are the amount of moisture, the amount of oxygen, the temperature, uh, the number of seeds that we put in, how we lay out the seeds. All of those are controlled with one thing being changed or varied by us. What we have to wait on the experiment to get is the number of seeds that germinate and how much they germinate, how healthy they turn out as they germinate. So all of that will be laid out nicely in this report which begins from setting some kind of context. What's the relevance of doing this kind of study? Well, it relates to the effect of acid rain on crop growth, the effect of acidity in soil. It shows an application of the concept of the mesocosm from topic 5 in IB Biologies. It's really a model experiment to understand something much bigger that happens in the environment. So all of this is the background or the context. Then we get into the procedure. Why are we following a procedure like this? Well, vinegar is the thing that we have available at home right now in our remote learning. And the mung bean vigna radiata, it's easy to find, it's cheap, and it germinates pretty quickly. Why do we choose this range of 2.5 to 4? The justification for that is because that is pretty much a match with what we define as acid rain. Remembering, of course, that rain itself is inherently acidic because of the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Rain, without any pollution, comes to a pH of around 5.5, 5.6. Acid rain would be a pH of around about 3.5 to 4.5, which is what we're seeking to set up here in our mesocosms. Of course, there's some chemistry that goes into diluting our 5% vinegar so that we could get uh, a range of dilutions that really run across 2.5 to 4.0. That will be explained in a separate video that will be done by IB chemistry students. Moving to the rest of the procedure, after talking about the independent, the dependent, and the controlled variables in great detail, you need to, of course, include a risk assessment in all of these uh, IB group 4 subjects, and of course, for ESS as well, you need to include your risk assessment which is why I've shared with you guys the uh, MSDS sheet for vinegar, which is the most significant ingredient that we have in this activity. The MSDS sheet, the Materials Safety Data Sheet, which tells you how to handle vinegar safely. And it's something which we might take for granted and think we can get it all of, over our hands because we put it in our food. But be aware that you only put a few drops of this on your food. And if you get a large amount of vinegar on your hands and worse yet in your eyes, then it could be very harmful to you. So you need to read that MSDS sheet, follow the procedures, and for your report, you need to include how you manage the risk associated with the use of vinegar. Then once we have our whole experiment set up, we are going to move to organizing the results, talking about uh, setting out the data like this, and evaluating, following all of these which we will discuss later on. But for now, I want to just reinforce a little bit about the dilution procedure, what's called serial dilution. So in our first container, we are going to have 0.5% vinegar or acetic acid. That's made by taking one milliliter out of here, this bottle, and adding nine milliliters of water to get solution to pour on your paper towel to represent acid rain of this concentration, 0.5%. What pH that corresponds to will be provided for you. And then inside of here, we will place six seeds and spread them out equidistantly 
equal distances with the little opening at the side of the seed, the micropyle facing down. All of those are controlled variables. The size of the towel, the amount of liquid, how you place the seed, the number of seeds that you put in, the, the distance apart between each of the seeds, all of those you aim to control. Of course, there's some obvious ones. They're all kept in the same room here at the same temperature. The amount of oxygen available to all of them would be the same because the container is the same size. Oxygen is an important requirement for successful seed germination. And you might wonder how come, how these seeds are going to get oxygen when the container is sealed. Well, considering how small the seeds are and you only have six of them, the oxygen supply in this, this container should be sufficient. But if you decide to open your containers, which you're going to have to do to check in with them after 48 hours, then another 48, then uh, another period of 72, followed by another period of 72, like I said in the last video, then over those 10 days, you're going to have to open these lids from time to time to take photos and possibly to, to measure the length of the young root and the young shoot. That, of course, will be a source of uh, error in your experiment but you will be doing the same for all five containers and you'd have to take a note of that in your final evaluation looking at the strengths and weaknesses of your procedure all of your data will have to be collated and organized and presented nicely like this so you realize that while this kind of investigation might look like something that a student at sixth grade could do for their science fair there's a lot more that goes into it when you want to do it with the necessary rigor and detail required for the IB Diploma, Group 4, and also for ESS.